Hello, and welcome back to my numeral system tutorial series. It's been a while since the last episode, but now we're working with ternary, which is just one um, step up from binary, though it has a lot of advantages, so let's get right into it. First of all, it is base 3, and um, as opposed to a bit, one um, little um, bit of inf one character is called a trit, um, not too commonly though, and some people call six trits one trite, but that's just a bit too, uh, eh, just a bit too cliche. Now, um, again, here's the system, since base three means that obviously it's a base of three, again, so they have increasing powers for however long you go about, so here's how you would count those different values, so the number of ones, the number of threes, nines, twenty sevens, eighty ones, and two hundred and forty threes. Along with, and along with the decimal equivalents. So then we can keep going with arithmetic in ternary. Again, addition, much the same as anything else. You know, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is um, 1, 0, so, since you can't have a 3, because 3 in ternary is really 1, 0. So then you would carry the 1, and then 1 plus 2 again is 1, 0. So you carry the 1, and you end up with that. Next, subtraction. Again, when you're dealing with arithmetic, even in decimal or anything else, sometimes it's more, it's easier instead of borrowing in all of these complex mechanisms. I mean, your computer doesn't use borrow mathematics. Um, it either does signed or unsigned addition, or um, some mainly older ones would apply threes complement. So as you see, I added a zero to the left-hand side of that. So that, so just so the top and the bottom were the same amount of trits, as it were. So to apply 3's complement, you take the bottom number and you invert it. Now in ternary, 0 goes to 2, 1 goes to 1, and 2 goes to 0. So 1 is the middle thing that always stays the same. But then you have to add 1, and then you get the actual number. So if you look at the subtraction, we change the bottom number to its 3's complement and change the whole problem to an addition problem. Now since we already know addition in ternary, we can easily get the answer. But since we applied the threes complement to the, to do this, we just blow off the most significant digit, which was the one. And since we didn't need the zero there, um, it went. So that's your answer. Now for multiplication, is really you know repeated addition, but we know how to do multiplication. One times two. Well, first you multiply the whole top number by the first bottom number, and that gives you the first one. And then you just add a zero to put the place. For, since you're multiplying by something in the tens place, and then you multiply the top by the one. And then the whole thing just becomes an addition problem, you know, basic arithmetic from elementary school, I would hope. And then division, you know, isn't always fun, especially with this. So first, we see the whole thing divided by um, 102, and that can fit inside of there, in fact, one time. So then we just do... Uh, the, just the subtraction of that, and since you know you already do subtraction, I don't have to go through it step by step, and so it equals 2. And then, um, well, how you can see, 2, um, 100, you can't divide 2 by 102, so that's another, well, first, so that's, you just carry down the 1, and then you put a 0 in the answer, you just shift it over, and still you can't divide 21 by a 102, well, you can't divide 2, 1 by 102, so you carry down the one again, and you add a zero, and you and but one or two can go into two one one, and it can go to it twice. So one or two times two is also two one one, and again subtraction, and it gets you a zero, which means your final answer would be one zero two. So the next is how to find it. I mean, the whole point of this series is you know the different numeral systems, so you should be able to learn how to do these without any comparison to decimal. But the only reason you would need to do is like for an end product if you need to convert it. So this is um, converting ternary to decimal. It's just like any other um, power of three is that you just um, on the top you can see you actually multiply it by the power of three it is, and two if you have to multiply it by two, or and the bottom is just the simplified version of that. And of course that equals 583. So two one zero two zero one in ternary, it's 583 in decimal. And then decimal to ternary, what you would do. You would just divide by 3, and if you don't get a remainder, then in the bottom, you just add a 0 to the right-hand side. And you keep going, and if you don't get a remainder, it's just a 0, 
and again, if you don't get a remainder, you add a 0. But if you do get a remainder, 0 0.6 is, would give you a 2, since that would be 2 over 3, so you would put a 2 there. And then if you have a remainder of point, if you have a remainder of 0.3, that would be equivalent to 1 over 3, so you would add a 1 to ternary. And you would keep going until you um, round it down to 0. And that's your final answer. So 3,456 in decimal converts to 112020000 in ternary. And again, that to help you out so you can actually know what place it is in. Now, the useful applications of ternary is counting to over 100 on your hand, depending on what position you um, put your hands in. Like, you can hover your hands up for zero, like, um, bend them to signal a one, and, like, just uh, bend them even more to signal a two. And, well, it really doesn't matter what way you use it, but if you can put your th fingers in three different states, then you can count in ternary up to um, well over 100, not quite 200 though. It's also used for qu computers with quicker math because normal computers nowadays work on binary, but in the past, well, during, you know, in the past and current, there are some experimental computers which work on ternary instead, and there are two different types. There's um, actual ternary, which they work on 0, 1s, and 2s, and then there's balanced ternary, which works on negative 1, 0, and 1. And that's just a quick way to um, allow even more numbers. So instead of using the most significant bit to signal negative or positive numbers like normal computers, it can just use a negative 1 instead. So you can do quicker math with larger numbers, with larger number capacity for less storage capacity. And also, ternary is the most efficient numeral system which there is, you know, a formula to calculate that, but it has the lowest integer radix, so which means it is the most efficient numeral system for st for st storing information, sorry. And then, you know, this is the end, so now you should know ternary, and then the things you've learned in the past three episodes would apply for numeral systems of any single base, but just, uh, but, you know, I've showed you enough numeral systems with bases less than 10, which we are accustomed to, like we don't have to go through quaternary or sextenary or octal, but let's go into the number systems that you can store big numbers in decimal in smaller with less amount of digits, like hexadecimal is base 16, you know, hexa is 6, des is 10, so 6 plus 10 is 16. And so, ne yeah, so next time we'll go over hexadecimal, which is a very very commonly used, like if you ever look at colors on your compu computer, you know, they're normally stored in hex, like green, like, you know, RGB colors are stored in um, six hex digits. And also what's nice about hexadecimal is that one hexadecimal digit is equivalent to four bits. So just two hexadecimal digits is the same capacity of a byte. So, that has been this episode of the numeral systems for ternary, and I will see you next time when we get into hexadecimal.